Thank you. God, Robin, you don't know how lucky you were to go first. Thank you, Kansas City. I have been sitting in the hot seat over here for about two hours, wondering if I was going to be able to get through this thing. I saw Robin get through brilliantly and the other inductees, and hopefully I'll be able to do a job as well as they have. But uh, obviously, it's a big thrill for me to be here today. First of all, I would like to thank the Baseball Writers of America for their overwhelming support in naming me into the Hall of Fame this year. I dreamt the same way Ryan did, or Nolan did, and I dreamt the same way Robin did. And this is a dream come true. I would also like to thank the staff of the Hall of Fame for making me and my family feel so welcome, all the kindness that you've given us. You are truly, and I mean this, you are truly the game's caretakers, and you're doing a wonderful job. It is such an honor to stand here and to be inducted with such good friends. Robin Yount, whom I played against for all those years, and I do mean that sincerely, of all the guys that I did play against for all that length of time, Robin, you are the one I enjoyed playing against the most. So congratulations to all you people in Milwaukee. You saw one of the best ball players I ever saw. To Orlando Cepeda, who came over in 1974 and thought I wasn't going to make it. I'm glad you don't scout for the Royals, Orlando. And to Nolan Ryan, a guy I played against 13 years and never said boo to, and he never said boo to me either. Until January 6th when I met him in New York after the, uh, we were announced uh, we were going to the Hall of Fame. And since then, Nolan, I think we've developed a little friendship, and hopefully it'll grow within years. Today concludes a long journey that has taken me from Southern California throughout America. And I very honestly stand humbly before you today in Cooperstown. As with any journey, I have been helped by so many people. That is why this induction is so special to me. I get to stand here and thank the many, many people who have helped me over my career in many different ways besides just playing baseball. I have always believed we live with our friends, not our accomplishments. I haven't accomplished one thing in baseball since I retired, but I still have a lot of friends. I think it all started in 1971, my high school coach, John Stevenson, I think taught me how to be a winning ball player. He taught me what it's like to be on a winning team day after day. And John, I really think that helped me through my career. Rosie Gillhouse and the scout that signed me, who called the Kansas City Royals and said, you know, I had this little skinny shortstop, 5'10", 165 pounds. And his brother Ken's a pretty good player in the big leagues. You know, I think this guy's got a chance to be a pretty good player. And Rosie Gillhausen, convinced the Royals to draft me. It wasn't an easy negotiation. I don't think when you did anything with my father, it was easy. My father, the first day he came over to the house, threw him out. And he came back a few days later and, and gave me a little bit more money, but not much. But my brother Bobby gave me the best advice I got in that day. If you think you're that good, what are you worrying about the money now? There's a lot more money to be made in baseball. He was right. The managers that I played for in the major leagues were very instrumental. From Jack McKeon, I remember my rookie year, always had a smile on his face. The game wasn't life or, uh, life or death. Dick Hauser, who managed us. Managed the Kansas City Royals to our first world championship in 1985 and then left us all too soon. To two old teammates I had, 
Duke Woth and John Woth, and I played against, I played with him in the minor leagues. I played with him in the major leagues for so long, and then got a chance to play for him. Duke, I appreciate all the friendship we've had over the years. Hal McCray, whom I consider the best hitting coach in baseball right now. He's the one that taught me how to play the game of baseball. He led by example. He ran balls out, he slid into second, tried to break up double plays. He stretched singles to doubles, doubles to triples. He would do whatever it took to win a ball game. And you know what? He wasn't in a hurry to go home when it was over. He was willing to sit in his locker, have a few cold ones, and discuss the game for as long as it took to learn something from other players or to help them learn. He was a great teammate and a great man, man to play for. Everybody thinks I forgot Whitey Herzog. Well, I didn't. Whitey Herzog, to this day, is a very, very special friend to me. I remember his first day when he came over to manage the Kansas City Royals. He said, George, you're playing third and you're hitting third every day as long as I'm managing. Prior to that, I was hitting sixth or seventh or first or third. You know, it didn't matter. But he showed some confidence in me, and that gave me stability as a major leaguer. And not only that, Whitey, all those home-cooked meals you gave me when I was single and needed a home-cooked meal once a summer. Um, the hunting trips, the fishing trips, the golf games that we had. You're a very special man. I'd like to thank the Kansas City Royal Organization for their support over so many years. I signed with them in 1971 and I'm still with them. Hopefully I'll be with them for a long time. <laughs> to this day, I, I firmly believe that I am still the biggest Royal fan in the country. My owners that I've had, we had some great owners in Kansas City. Ewing and Muriel Kaufman did a tremendous job. They showed a lot of confidence in me as a youngster by giving me a five-year contract early in my career and then renegotiating that or extending that. And then we had another owner come in in 1984, Avern and, uh, Fogelman and his wife, Wendy. Avern gave me the best advice I've ever been given. In 1984, he pulled me in one day and he says, you know, you spent 43 days on the disabled list, and I'm paying you more money than anybody else on this team. He said, what I want you to do next year is go get yourself in the best shape you possibly can, and you come to spring training, and you go out and help us win a World Series. We were capable of doing that. Sure enough, in 1984, the winner, a friend of mine from high school, took off work. We worked out. I came to spring training in the best shape of my life. I got there and everybody thought I was sick. They said, George, you're too skinny, gain 10 pounds. Well, you know what? I gained about five back all summer and had the best year I had and we won the World Series. <laughs> my equipment manager to this day is one of my best friends, Alex Zeke. I would like to thank him for treating me with such respect as an 18-year-old kid in his first big league uh, camp. Your friendship means the world to me today, Alex. And there's been a guy that's been family to not only myself, but to all my brothers, my mother. He's the godfather of one of our children, Arthur Richmond. Thank you, Arthur who's now an executive with the New York Mets. My teammates over the last 20 years that I've had, thank you for all your friendship. It's been so important to me. You all have made such an impact on my life, but not only as a player, but as a man. There is one that stands out. Jamie Quirk. Thanks. 
Charlie Lau was my hitting coach in 1974. At that time, I was hitting 200 with 200 at-bats at the All-Star break. He put his arm around me and he said, George, I think you got a chance to hit, but you're going to have to change a few things. I said, well, what do you have in mind? And he said, well, I'll tell you what. We have two days off for the All-Star break. We have practice at 5 o'clock on Wednesday, and then we're going to jump on a plane and fly to Baltimore. Why don't you meet me at the stadium at 2 o'clock, and we'll sit down and we'll discuss it, and we'll try to figure out a philosophy and a theory that will work for you. Well, we got out there and we looked at video of players that he's helped before and other players that uh, he wanted to maybe model myself after. And we started to take batting practice every day. I think for as long as Charlie Lau was our hitting coach, he and I had extra batting practice, 3 o'clock on the road, 4 o'clock at home. Some days it was for five swings, ten swings, just to make sure you didn't lose anything from the day before. And some days might have been for 15, 20 minutes, trying to find out what's happened from the night before. But Charlie, thank you so much for molding me as a ball player and making today possible. I ran into little Charlie yesterday, and he gave me this New York Yankee ring to wear. Charlie, I can't do it. <laughs> I don't like those Yankees still. <laughs> To my brothers, you know, sometimes I wonder why all this has happened to me and not you. All I ever wanted to do was be as good as you. Right now, I wish it was one of you, believe me. But I know the respect you all have for the game. And I know how hard, I know you know how hard it really is to play. So thank you for all your support. To my mother, Ethel. You are the heart and soul of our family growing up. Hopefully your loving and understanding ways have rubbed off on me as Leslie and I try to raise our three boys. Thanks for being here today and in the past month. I love you. And to my father, who passed away in 1992, prior to me getting 3,000 hits and right after I had gotten married, he's never seen his grandchildren, at least my three boys. But growing up sometimes, I misunderstood your tough and dominant ways, Dad. But as I've grown up, I have realized what your goals were. For me and my brothers, never to be content and to be tough competitors. I think we all learned well from you. Thank you. <clears throat> to my wife, Leslie, of seven years. Now, I didn't get married. I was a bachelor playing in the major leagues till I was 38 years old. And I met this woman in 1990 and we ended up getting married in 1992. You are everything a wife and mother could be. You remind me so much of my mother. You made my life so much more enjoyable, and you had me from hello. <clears throat> to my three boys, Jackson, Dylan, and Robin, you've given me such great joy. Whatever you choose to do in life, sons, I only hope you have the Brett work ethic. Strive to be your best, and I will always try to be there for you. And the fans of Kansas City.
When I first arrived in Kansas City in 1973, you welcomed me into your beautiful city and into your homes. It's a place where I met my wife and my three children were born. And to this day, I'm so proud to call KC home. Many of you have made this trip, and I really appreciate that. I know Cooperstown is a long way from Kansas City. Also, it is my understanding right now in Kansas City, they are showing this on the Jumbotron live. And I cannot thank you people enough for going out there and supporting the Royals today and for your support over so many years. I have so much to be thankful for, and the people of Kansas City have made it possible for me. My brother Ken played on, what, 11 or 12? 10 or 11 teams in a 12-year career. And he said he wouldn't change places with anybody because he's met so many wonderful people. Well, I've met that many wonderful people in Kansas City, so thank you. To all my friends who made this trip from all over the country, from San Diego to Memphis, St. Louis, Florida, Southern California, Spokane, I even had a friend of mine flying with his wife and two daughters from Honolulu. That's a long flight. I can't thank you enough for coming out here and, and sharing this moment with myself and my family. And to everybody here, Thank you for making this weekend such a wonderful and unforgettable night. I will never, ever forget the last three days. Thank you.